Daniel here for Tabletop for One and my 5 after 5 solo preview of Chroma Mix. Now, Chroma Mix is a hand management game designed by George Zhang and published by Jay-Z Games, and it's going to be on GameFound coming June 1st. You can check out the link I provided to see the preview page for GameFound and uh, follow it if you'd like. Now, as a disclaimer, I received a preview prototype copy for the game, and I only agreed to do a solo tutorial playthrough, but I enjoyed the game so much that I wanted to talk about it in this video. And so I have five thoughts after five plays of this game. Actually, it's probably like 10, maybe 12 plays at this point. And so for number one, let's talk about the theme. The theme of Chroma Mix is color theory. Now, color theory is the study and practical application of mixing colors. I, I know nothing about this subject. My dad, who's an artist and was uh, in the sign business for many years, knows a lot more about color theory than I do. But this game has you mixing colors, basic colors like cyan, magenta, and yellow, and trying to mix them progressively towards the vibrant colors of red, green, and blue. I wouldn't have ever thought of making a game with this theme, but it works so well. And so for number two, let's talk about the art and graphic design. The colors, of course, are pleasant to look at. The cards each show an icon specific to that color, and so it's easily recognizable. And of course, it has the name of the color and everything. Everything is relatively easy to read on the cards. There even is flavor text at the bottom that explains a lot of information about the different colors and the process of color theory. Now, I did make some suggestions to the designer and publisher about changing the card layout because in the solo mode, you have to display the cards in a way that you can see the relevant information. And I offered some suggestions to make that a little bit easier. And, but that only applies to the solo play. It doesn't make it unplayable. I just think it would make it easier to lay it out on the table. That's all. And so for number three, let's talk about the gameplay. Now, if you played hand management games, oftentimes you start out with three basic cards. Like in this case here, we have the, the cyan, magenta, and yellow. These will be your starting hand. And you're going to use these cards by doing one of three main actions. There's printing, which is playing the card to the table and getting the bonus on the card. There are instant bonuses or ongoing bonuses. Or you can take two of these cards from your hand, mix them, and take a card from the market. And when you mix cards, they just go back into the relevant piles or discard piles. They leave your hand until you mix them or gain them another way again. And the last thing you can do is refill your hand. You can do that as an action or some cards let you refill from that card. And what that means is to take a card in your play area and just add it back to your hand. But the ongoing effects of various cards are where this, this game really shines because it starts adding combo and engine building effects to your game, allowing you to... When you play a card, then you suddenly get a bonus. Then when you do the action on that card from playing it, that triggers another bonus. And you get start reeling in all these extra cards or mixing multiple cards at the same time or mixing from your hand and your play area. There's all sorts of combinations. And then why you're doing all those combinations? Well, it's a race. It's a race to 17 points, or it's a race to complete one of the red or blue objectives. If you complete one of those victory conditions, you trigger the end of the game. And that's going to lead me into number four, the ease of solo play. This game is really easy to set up. You set up the two markets with the two different decks, and they're marked on the back of the card, so it's easy to reference. You have your other areas of the red, green, and blue stacks, as well as the cyan, magenta, and yellow stacks. And then you just set up the AI deck with two of each of those uh, beginner cards and three mixed cards. And when you play against the AI, the AI is going to turn over two cards. If it's a color, it adds it to its hand. If it's a mixed card, which looks like this here, then it'll try and mix two colors in its hand to make a color from the market. And the interesting thing is, you get to choose which of the cards the AI is going to mix for with the caveat that it can't mix for a color that it already has in its hand. 
and I'll go more into that a little bit later here. Now, the one thing is that there's a lot of iconography in the game. Each of the cards has different ability, and it looks different with the iconography. But there is a handy appendix in the back of the rulebook that explains how to use each of those cards and explains it quite clearly. So once you get a few plays in, you've got most of the cards under your belt, and the game should go by rather quickly. And so for number five, let's talk about the replayability. Now this was a big surprise for me. Now when I saw the cards, I saw that the two markets have a deck of cards that have repeated cards and no unique cards in there. I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna keep seeing the same cards over and over again, so I'm just gonna keep playing the same way and I'll find a winning strategy and that'll cause me to win every time. Uh-uh, <laughs> that just doesn't work. I, I tried. I tried playing the same strategy, one that worked in a previous game that I had won, and tried it again. It doesn't work. And it should, right? It, it really should. You should see those cards come up regularly because there's so many of them. There's four of each kind in the level two deck. There's three of each kind in the level three deck. So you should see them. But that's not the, th the issue. The issue is that rule. The rule about the AI not mixing a card that it has in, a hand, in its hand. And that rule is genius. I, I, I can't tell you how surprised and impressed I am by how that rule affects the gameplay. Because now you have this agony of the decision, do I let the AI take one of the level two cards? Do I let him, let him take a level three card? That one gives him points. Do I let him take one of the end game cards? That gets him closer to a victory. Which do I choose? It's really hard to choose because then also it could be a card you wanted to use. And if you saw my playthrough, I kept giving the AI one, one specific card because it kept being used out of its hand. And so I added that same card back to its hand and it ended up having almost all the copies of that card. Before I realized that, I'm like, uh-oh, I needed that card and now I don't have it. And then, of course, how that plays out in the end with the cards of the AI that go into its discard and get reshuffled into its deck, it plays out so differently every time. Sometimes the mixed cards come up early, sometimes they come up late, and that can really affect how quickly the AI runs through its cards, and before you know it, it's got every card out, and then it's got all the points it needs to win. And so in the end, Every time, I mean every time I've played the game, it's played out differently. It's forced me to do different strategies. It is challenging, it is fun, and it results in a really interesting solo experience. And it's just a deck of cards that has repeated cards. I, it blows my mind. And I guess I don't need to say anything more. So if you want, check out the Game Found page and the link I provided. Ask me any questions in the comments below. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And I thank you very much for watching Tabletop for One. Have a great night.